So if you want to know how to create a purchase order in SAP S4 HANA, then this is the video for you. I'll be taking you through the, the process, how to identify the app. And we'll be looking at the app details, and what authorization role you need or roles you need to, to use this app. Within the purchase order, we'll be talking about the personal settings, and how you select fields and values that you want to include by default in your purchase order. Then the purchase order creation process itself We'll be looking at the different sections, the header and item sections, how you add a vendor, how you select a vendor, how the data is populated from the vendor master. We'll be looking at how you actually select the purchase org, purchase group and company code, how you add materials and quantities for the materials that you want to procure or products. Then the info record, how you reference it within the purchase order item and what information you have in the info record. Then the more important fields, how you select the stock type, where is the plan delivery time, the good receipt processing time, uh, where is the delivery complete indicator if you want to say this order is completely delivered. And then we'll be looking at where you find the material group and lastly how to print the purchase order. Let's jump in and start. Firstly, the apps, the two apps that I'll be using in this video is the create purchase order advanced app and then also to change the purchase order let's look at create purchase order first this is what, what the app looks like if you enter in you go into the app and you go to your user profile and you select about you will see what the details are of this app create purchase order advanced Here's the component and the app ID is ME21N, very important. If you go to the Fiori app library and you do a search for ME21N, let me show you how you do it. You go to the app library, you go to apps, all apps, and in the search area you just type ME21N. You will see that the app is identified, you just select it. Here's the app description. The details, here's the app ID, um, there's, there's a, the product features are listed here that you can work through, um, also um, the implementation information. If you select configuration, you will see all the technical stuff is in here, technical catalogs, business catalogs. If you scroll down, you will see there's the different roles that this app can be activated with. Yeah, in our case, I selected SAP underscore BR underscore purchaser as the, the role that I want to use in SU01. Then if you log into Fiori, you will have this app available. So firstly, before we start, um, I want to close the sections. We'll talk about the different sections. There's the, the header section, the item overview and the item details. You can see you can basically collapse the three sections and it's quite flexible to use if you want to work in one area you just click on it and it opens we'll talk through this now in in, in a bit firstly i want to talk about personal settings which is quite useful when you create your purchase orders there's a, a number of settings that you can go through the first one in the basic settings screen is to actually display the key, the key is usually the, the plant code or the material number or the is a, a company code that you can display. If you deselect it, it will just give you a description. If you select it, the key is displayed. For instance, the plant code might be 1710, then the plant code is displayed and not the plant description. Moving on to default values, you will see there's a, if you select default values, there's a PO header section and a purchase order item section within the PO header you will see that I've selected document type purchasing org purchase group and company code with default values this means when I create my purchase order these values will be populated by default I don't have to select it over and over so the information is readily available in the purchase order if you select more fields you will see on the left hand side here is the ones that we're already using you can add terms of payment currency in code terms and so on you can basically add these and add a default value 
if you want to do that. If you go to purchase order item, you will see the item category that I selected is standard. You can work through account assignment category delivery dates. I just selected plant 1710. So this will always be selected on my item level for all items in the purchase order. If you select more fields, you will see these are the hidden fields. That's not yet there. Price date, income terms, and so on. Very useful to use um, if, you are, if you work a lot with purchase orders. So let's start the process. You will see when we go into the header section, the top section, the standard PO was selected from my default settings. Purchase org 1710, purchase group, and company code was selected by default. So I don't have to select anything there. My first step will be to select the supplier where I want to purchase from. So you usually go into the find section. Again, there's various ways of finding a supplier. In this case, the general tab is selected with the general section. You can do it by company code, region. There's a lot of options here that you can work with. So by material. In this case, I'm just going to select supplier and you will see that there's a number of fields that you can use to actually find your supplier. Um, there is a search term which is stored in the supplier master city name supplier number and I'm going to use supplier number to show you how to I just put the number in and I click on go there's my supplier search term I can also use this code here in the search term field postal code I can use in this field and so on so then you just say ok the supplier number is displayed at this stage and you will see um, there's a supplier master record behind this number if you please press enter you will see that the vendor des description or name is pulled in there's additional information that's that's also populated if you go to the the address tab you will see that the street name and number is pulled in the postal code city country so all the master data linked to the supplier is the, is, is pulled into the purchase order by the by default if you go to the delivery tab you will see this also comes from the supplier master record but payment terms payment in days very important this is also maintained another important one is the vendor partner sections at this stage there's only one partner function set up for the supplier is only a supplier there are more than one option um, for vendor functions and you might have you might use a, a contact person an ordering address and so on and then you link these different roles that you can use in your process um, if, it, if these numbers are different from your supplier number. That's a topic on its own, but it's still very, very useful. So let's go to org data. Like I said, the, these values are populated. Um, the purchasing organization by definition is uh, like a purchasing department. Within your company, you might have more than one purchasing organization. In this case, I selected 1710, but you have the option to select any of these. The purchasing group is a key for a buyer, a specific buyer or a group of buyers that's responsible for purchasing activities. Again, it might be a group or an individual with a name in here. I just selected 001 and then company code. That's the company that you're buying for. Very important. All right, let's move on to the item overview. And you will see in here, there's a different set of fields. Most important one is to start off with is to find your material, the product or the materials that you want to procure. Um, again, there's quite a large number of ways to find your product. You can do it by description, the one that we're going to use or by number. If you have an old material number that you loaded in SAP um, in your data take on from your legacy system you can also do it by old material number by bill of material by material group by material type so there's quite a number of options for now we're going to use this option and i will be looking at the material number that i'm going to put in here and we click on go 
So there's the material description and then the language and I just say add. So basically it's added to my purchase order as the first item. Now the moment I press enter on my keyboard, there's a lot of information, default information pulled in. You will see the material group, the order price, unit of measure, the actual net price, um, the description is pulled in and you will see that you actually have to enter a quantity. The system wants the quantity that you want to procure, we just add that and there we go. That's your first item that you added to your purchase order for this price. If we scroll a bit to the right, you will see yes, the, the plant key that I spoke about earlier, that you're adding only the, the key. Um, you can also just add the description in the personal settings, depending on how you want to do it. If you scroll a bit to the right, you will see there's the info record field. The information record, the info record, it helps you to manage your, your vendor's current price for a specific material. So if you double click on this number, it will take you into the info record master data. There's the record number, the supplier and the material, material group, purchase group. And these are the default information that's usually stored that you can use in your purchase order. Got your plan delivery time, purchase group, quantities, prices, validity dates. All of this is very, very important in your procurement process. And that's built in by default into your purchase order. I just want to go back to the header section, um, to the firstly the conditions tab. So the moment you add your, your materials or your products, to your purchase order, you will see these pricing conditions are populated with values that is set up beforehand. So this is your pricing bit that is populated. Very, very important. So for now, I'm going to close this header section and just display the item details part. This is the lowest level of detail in the purchase order with the different tabs that you can look at at the top. Firstly, if you have more than one item, you can it will be listed on this drop down here. So if you have 10, you can just directly click on your list and access that specific item, the details. So on the delivery tab, what I want to show you here is this is where you can select your stock type. Um, but if you receive the stock, you can book it into unrestricted stock. Uh, call it inspection if you want to go through a QA process or you can block the stock. So you have the option here to, to actually select that. The plan delivery time, which is pulled in from the info record, that's how long you will wait for this product to be, to be delivered or how, how long it will take to obtain this product. Um, you can also put in a good receipt process in time. So that's basically the number of work days that you need after receiving the material that you can go through a process of inspection and then place it into storage that you can put it in here and this will determine when this product is available for use in your in your company or in your plant and storage location if we go on there's the delivery complete indicator which is not relevant for now because we're still creating the order but the moment you created your order and you received a partial delivery and you say i want to close this order you will then select the delivery complete indicator. That will, the system will then know that you are done with this order. It's fully delivered. You can use that. Then let's go to the material data tab. In here you will see the material group, which is also used quite a lot for reporting purposes and then for for other purposes. Okay, so that's all the different sections and fields. That's very important. Then you can do a final check to actually say, is this document complete? And the system will tell you that there is no error. No errors are displayed. So we're good to save. So we just click on save and the order is saved. Let's go back on screen. If you are tired of slow internet speeds and frustrating online ads ruining your online experience, then I have the solution for you. Stereo VPN. 
With Stereo VPN, you get a one-time payment solution with no hidden fees and unlimited free access to the premium edition. No ads, no interruption, just pure seamless browsing and streaming. This cutting edge technology will supercharge your internet connection speed so you can get things done faster and enjoy buffer free streaming. Stereo VPN follows a strict no lock policy, ensuring your digital footprint stays yours and yours alone. With the one click global connection feature, you can effortlessly connect to servers around the world. No more sudden VPN connection switch offs. Stereo VPN Premium Edition has a kill switch function that activates during such emergencies. The tunnel is instantly closed, ensuring that all of the user's data will remain encrypted until the VPN connection is recovered. Say goodbye to monthly subscriptions and hello to uninterrupted online freedom. Visit the link specified below to get Stereo VPN today. Okay, so now I want to select change purchase order because I want to show you how to print a purchase order. There's the purchase order number. If you select messages, you will see the message is completely done. It's been printed most probably. There's the print channel. You can then display the document. And in here you have the option to download it in PDF format or you can just print it to your local printer. Thank you very much for watching my video. Hope to see you soon.